TCC. We wanted to wish you a happy Resurrection Day from the younger Silverberg couple. We love you, we miss you, we hope to be able to see you again real soon. Everybody stay safe and healthy and God bless. Good morning, Trinity. Breaking news. This just in. If you're wondering where the Lord is this very hour, he's alive and well with his resurrection power. Happy Easter from, from the Grayers. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter from, from the, the Durfies. Durfies. Hope everybody's staying safe and healthy. And we look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Happy Easter from the Hickmans. Be wise, but don't be fearful. We miss you. We love you. Stay safe. See you soon. Happy Easter from, from the Jeffries. We love you, Trinity. Hi, Trinity. We're the Love Days. I'm Sharon. I'm Gabby. And this is Libby. And I'm Rusty. We hope everyone's staying safe and healthy during this time. We really miss you guys. And, and happy, happy Easter. Happy Easter, Trinity. Kelly and Nikki Kinder here. We're just so glad to be able to celebrate this day with you. And we're just so glad we serve a risen Savior. Happy Easter, Happy Resurrection Day, and we love you all. Mahraba, Keith Halcom. This is Robert in Vienna, Nage, also known as the Abu Andrews. And we would like to welcome you on this beautiful Sunday day of worship for Easter. We love you guys and miss you so much, and we can't wait to be back with you. You're our family. And we are praying for all of you. God bless. Hey TCC, Medley family here, wishing you guys a great Resurrection Day and hope you all be safe. We miss seeing your faces. He, he is, is alive. alive! Shalom TCC, he is risen today. We sure wish we could be together to celebrate his resurrection today as we normally do in our services on Easter. But Lord, uh, we ask your blessing on your people and let them know today that he is indeed risen. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. Stay safe. We, we love, love you all. Hello everyone from the Weems family. And Happy Easter everybody. I love you and I miss you. Amen. He is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Happy Resurrection Sunday everyone from the Lyon family. Hey everybody, Mark here, one of the pastors at TCC and I'm welcoming you to our Easter morning service and I've got good news for you. He is alive. We're so glad you guys are joining with us and we also want to stay connected. You can take some pictures of what you're doing now or how you're celebrating Easter or what you guys have been doing in the community and you can post them using the hashtag TCCNoxStories. Also, we're going to be sharing communion together with the Lind family right after the sermon today, so you can feel free to get prepared for that. Right now we have a message from our children's and youth leaders just before we go into worship. Happy, Happy Resurrection, Resurrection Sunday. Sunday! Good morning Trinity, John and Laura here from uh, Praise and Station and Children's Church. We're so excited to be with you on this uh, victorious day. And uh, for all the kids out there, we hope you enjoyed the little gifts that uh, we were able to get this morning or whenever your parents gave them. Hopefully you still have a few pieces of candy left and you've enjoyed them. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the resurrection eggs, which Rob uh, put a video out earlier for that. Kids, we hope you enjoyed that with Mr. Rob singing and explaining how to use those resurrection eggs we delivered to you. If you missed it, you can look on the church's Facebook page or on their website. And now the Jeffries have something to share about the youth. Hello guys, this is the Jeffries here. We just want to say that we miss you guys, miss seeing you guys, miss hanging out, just being together as a group, miss seeing you guys on Sundays. Just, it's not the same being at home and seeing you guys on Facebook and what you guys are doing, just through pictures and stuff like that. So I've been thinking with Jill and Hannah and Catherine and I, just going over ways that we can still hang out with you guys, be able to see you guys, be able to interact, and be able to just have a youth group still on Wednesday nights. Um, Catherine and Hannah and Jill came up with a really good idea about using Zoom. Would you mind going through that with us? Sure. So, um, like Joshua said, we really miss you guys, um, and we've been trying to figure out ways to still spend time with you while respecting the uh, current crisis. Um, so, <laughs> we have decided that we're going to do youth group on the Zoom call, <clears throat> um, at least for the month of April. It's gonna look the same that it always has as far as the structure. 
So we'll have a 7 p.m. Uh, worship, and then we'll have a message, and then we'll have small group. Um, it's just a little bit different, but it's so that we can still hang out with you guys. And now we're going to enter into worship, and I just would like for you guys to just stand or sit or whatever is comfortable for you guys. Just worship the Lord. Worship Him where He's at, even though we can't be in the church gathering together, we can't be in the sanctuary, but He's still with you. He's still in the midst of this crisis. So if you don't mind, just stand up and enjoy worship.
There was a moment when the lights went out When death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history They're on a cross they made for sinners For every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished but Not the end we could have known Where the earth began to shake and the veil was torn What sacrifice was made As the heavens roared Oh, hail King Jesus Oh
Father, we praise you in this moment for you are holy, you are righteous, the most high. A king stepping off of his throne, coming to earth to die for us, only to be resurrected and give fullness of joy, fullness of hope. How we praise you, how we praise you. Sing all hail.
Well, we want to thank the worship team for all their hard work. And since we couldn't all be together today, we did prepare something really special for you. I hope you really enjoy this. spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes 
that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But when, but the men said to them, "Why do you look from the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he." Told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James. And the others, with them who told this to the apostles. Thank you, Elsie, so much for reading our scripture today. Boy, if there's ever a day we needed to hear some good news, these are the days, right? And we have that good news. God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead in power, and because He's alive, He can make all things new. I want you to think with me just a minute about those women in the story. And they went to the tomb to tend the dead body of Jesus. And yet they hear this message. He's not here. He is risen. And God employs them as the very first evangelist. And he says, take this message back. So they take it back and the apostles are listening. They don't know whether to believe it or not. Something resonates inside of Peter. And Peter, who was in such a state of hopelessness because he had just denied the Lord, he had just let him down. He had just seen the one he'd put all of his hope in hang on a cross and be put in a tomb. And he was ready to just go back to fishing. But something sparked inside of his heart. This message of the resurrection broke through. It's like this message of hope flooded over the numbness in his soul and it washed out the doubts. And that message of hope was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, many years later, Peter wrote a letter to some Christians who were suffering greatly. And here's what he said. In his great mercy, God has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. New birth, living hope is what we sang about this morning. Hope, hope is what this day is about. You know, hope is just a desire that you expect to be fulfilled. It's just expecting that something is going to turn out well. Wow, and the, the days we're going through right now, I mean, none of us really uh, have gone through a pandemic before. You, you know, it's like, how do, we, how do we know what's coming next? And so many people have fearful hearts and they're just unsure. And yet the scripture says to us that we have this hope as an anchor for our souls, firm and secure. We can be anchored in this crazy time because of the hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Paul put it this way, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. Can you imagine that? Even our faith, even what we say we believe, even the religious things that we do is useless if Jesus hasn't been raised from the dead. Think of it. If Jesus wasn't resurrected, then all of his promises are false and our sin still has power over us. And death is still an enemy to be feared. And where's the meaning of life? But Jesus is alive. He is risen. And this is what makes Christianity different from every other religious idea. It's not just an idea. It's a living relationship with a living God. And the resurrection of Jesus is not just an event in history, although it is an event in history, but it's an event that breaks into history with the power from another world. 
so that everything can be changed. And there's no good news if Jesus is dead. But if he's alive, we have hope, right? And we could talk this morning about the proof of the resurrection, historical proof. We could talk about Old Testament prophecy and how so many prophets foretold the fact that Messiah would die and be raised again to life. We could talk about the many historical witnesses. The Bible says over 500 people saw him alive after he had been dead and in the tomb. We could talk about the witness of the disciples who believed this message of the resurrection so strongly they were willing to give their lives for it. We could talk about the millions of people over the 2,000 years since Jesus rose again who would testify. Many of you, along with me, would testify, Jesus Christ is alive because He's changed my life. We could talk about all of that this morning in detail. But you know, Christianity is an experiential faith. What we believe affects our lives. And it should call us into some kind of a response. So I have another question I want to ask this morning. My question this morning is, what does the resurrection of Jesus Christ mean to you and me today? I mean, let's get practical. What does it mean? And the first thing I would say is, if Jesus is raised from the dead, we better take him seriously. And God is validating everything that Jesus Christ said about himself through his resurrection. Romans 1.4 says this, As the mighty Son of God, he was raised from the dead and miraculously set apart with a display of triumphant power supplied by the Spirit of holiness. And now Jesus is our Lord and our Messiah. You know, Jesus Christ spoke words like no other man ever spoke. He said things that were either true or completely outrageous. He claimed to have a unique relationship with God. In fact, he claimed to be the Son of God. He lived a life of self-denial, and yet he preached the gospel of a kingdom with himself as the king. He said he would give his flesh for the sins of many. And he said that he would rise again on the third day. And what Paul is saying here is that God Almighty has validated. He's like given his stamp of approval. Jesus is the Son of God in power. And he gave that stamp of approval by raising him from the dead. Jesus is who he says he is. And you and I have to deal with that. We have to change our lives. We have to alter ourselves around the words that he said. But to me, one of the most important things that affects my life in terms of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is that it gives me hope. It gives all of us hope in so many different ways. We have hope of forgiveness and a brand new life. Paul said it this way in Romans 4.25, Jesus was delivered over to death for our sins and he was raised to life for our justification. We can have a brand new life. The scripture says that if anyone is in Christ, he's a brand new creature. The old things are passed away and behold, everything is new and everything is of God. And we live in East Tennessee here and after a long East Tennessee winter, about four months of cloudiness, and the trees have no leaves, and we had almost a month solid of just rain, and now the sun breaking through, and we see the flowers and the colors and the life that's coming through, this hope that comes through, it breaks through this grayness and this drab of winter. Every soul needs that kind of hope. You know, in the 1990s, I was in Belarus, which is a former Soviet Republic, with my friend Philip Adams, and we were teaching there. And you know, before we left, I remember this really vividly, before we left, it was about a week here in East Tennessee when it rained and the sun just didn't shine at all. We flew overnight 
to Europe, so we didn't see the sun there. And when we landed there in Poland and in Belarus for 10 days, the sun never shined through the clouds. It was overcast, it was snowing, it was cold, it was dreary. And you know that does something to you. Well, we were teaching uh, this group of leaders and we were teaching in this old uh, Soviet cultural center. It was a place where the Soviets would, would uh, come and basically uh, spread their message. And of course, communism had fallen. So we're using this building now. It's a big, beautiful auditorium. Well, it wasn't beautiful. It was kind of, it was kind of drab auditorium, actually. But it had these big windows. It was so cold because the power wasn't on. And uh, we had to literally teach in our overcoats. We're seeing our breath as we were teaching the whole week long. And at the end of that week, we were teaching uh, at a service uh, on a Sunday morning. And we were teaching about the gospel and the resurrection of Christ and about the Father heart of God and how through Christ and His work and His resurrection, we can be brought into the family of God as sons and daughters. You know, when we started praying for people, just a miraculous thing happened. It seemed miraculous. The sun broke through so bright through those windows and it's like it was a light show down on us and everybody was feeling it because it had been so drab for so long. The, the light broke into that auditorium, but you know what? The light of Jesus broke into the souls of those people too. And the sun went back behind the clouds after a while, but the hope that sprung up in the hearts of those people because they understood what Jesus had done for them and the fact that God is now calling them sons and daughters, man, that stays forever. We have this eternal living hope. And part of that hope is we have a brand new life. Paul says he was delivered over for, to death for our sins, but he was raised to life for our justification. And maybe many of you have heard the story of how Jesus died for your sins so that you don't have to be under the weight of the penalty of sin. But there's more to it than that. He was raised to life for our justification. Not only did He take away our sin, but He gave us His righteousness. He's justified us. And justified means God Almighty, the righteous judge, declares me and you not guilty because of the work of Christ. And that's good news. He has brought us into this new birth, into a living hope. Peter said. And no, we were dead and now we're alive. We were guilty and now we're forgiven. We were enemies and now we're reconciled. We were separated, but now we're brought into his family and adopted as sons and daughters. That's such good news. But there's more hope. We have hope to live in freedom from sin. Romans 6, 4 and 14 Paul says this, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For sin shall no longer be your master because you're not under the law, but under grace. I can just tell you my story. Jesus Christ changed my heart. He changed my life and my desires. Before I came to Christ as a young man, I had many addictions. I was addicted to alcohol and to drugs. And I was addicted to very unhealthy relationships. And I was addicted to a self-centered, miserable lifestyle. And it was miserable. But I couldn't get out of it. But if any man's in Christ, he's a brand new creature. And God spoke to me. He drew me to himself. He raised me from the dead. He changed my heart and I was born again. And you know, those things that, ch that chained me down and bound me, those chains just fell off of me. God gives us this hope that we don't have to be bound by sin. Maybe there's some things that, that you're struggling with that you feel bound to, you can't get over. This is the hope of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We've been raised together with Him to newness of life. So sin does not have to have 
power over us. That's good news. But there's more hope. We have hope that we will be resurrected too. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul says this, If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. First fruits, that means he was the first one of many who would come. The first fruits, so that we can have a new life, a resurrected life with him too. You know, um, death is the greatest fear. Really, almost all of our fears are really just a fear of death, right? I, I don't fear heights. I fear falling down from heights and dying. And I don't fear water. I fear drowning in the water and dying, right? And I'm not so much afraid of coronavirus. I'm just afraid of dying, right? This is fear that has gripped the entire earth over this thing. But you know, the fear does not have to be an enemy that grips us. The scripture says that the sting of death is taken away in Jesus. The grip of that fear of death that binds us is taken away in Jesus. And that's good news. But there's more hope. We have hope that Jesus Christ is present and active in our lives today. You know, the young church was growing and these are the words that were penned to describe the experience of the believers. In Acts chapter four, verse 33, it says, with great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. God's grace and power work inside of us because of the resurrection of Jesus. The living Jesus is alive today in his believers among his believers, through his believers, through the ones who follow him. His life is extended out to to others. This is to me one of the most amazing things that God calls us to be co-laborers together with him, to partner together, to take the hope that's within us and share it with other people. And you know, everywhere this risen Savior has gone, life springs up. You can think of human lives that are changed. You can think of Uh, morality that's ushered in, hospitals that are built, social justice flourishes, literacy flourishes, human rights, they all flourish where the gospel flourishes because this living Jesus brings life everywhere he goes. Brothers and sisters, I just want to challenge you that we have a higher calling than just playing video games or watching Netflix or making dollars, or looking fashionable. There's a purpose God has called you to. He's put unique things inside of you. He's made you in such a way that you can express Him and glorify Him to other people in ways that nobody else can do it. We're called to something much higher. And I believe that it's not so much about believing a doctrine of the resurrection, as it is meeting the one who was raised from the dead. God is upping the bar on us. He's raising that bar up to where we're not just uh, mentally assenting to the resurrection, but we're actually joined together, living life with this resurrected Jesus inside of us and letting that life come through us. So in faith, we, we move from just belief in a doctrine to knowledge of a person and to a changed life. And here we are in a global pandemic and we're socially distancing and we're kind of separate and we're mostly inside of our house, houses right now because we're, we're uh, trying to be isolated from or in, in insulated from this infectious disease. But I just want to remind you As believers in Jesus, we are infectious. We can affect everything that we touch with the hope and the joy and the grace of God and the life that's in the gospel. So we're not just on the defense here. We're on the offense here. And God is doing something. He's alive. He's ministering right now in the midst of this pandemic. He wants to to touch other people and he wants to do it through us 
<clears throat> I'm reminded of the scripture in Isaiah 61. It says, arise. This was a very dark time in Israel's history. But God says, arise to his people. Arise and shine for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And darkness will cover the earth. And he says, gross darkness will cover the people. But God's light will arise upon you. And the Gentiles, the people who don't know God yet, will come to your light. Man, it's time for us to rise. Jesus rose from the dead. He's raised us up together with him. And it's time for us to rise up and be light. You know, we can have the hope of being healthy people who can also help others become healthy too. And I want to end our time together this morning with the words of Jesus from John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. You know, this, Jesus is talking to Mary here. Mary had just lost her brother. Lazarus had died. And this was a really traumatic thing for her. It changed everything for her life. In that day, um, if the men of the house died, the women in the house were severely affected. So she was not only affected emotionally at the death of her brother, she was affected uh, economically. He wasn't there to work. They had to work harder now. Socially, he, and she was also affected spiritually because her faith was shaken. And she said to Jesus, if you were here, my brother wouldn't have died. And here are the words of Jesus to her. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And I just want to ask you that question. Do you believe this? Jesus Christ is the life of God. He is the one that makes us able to live forever. Do you believe this? Now, you either fall into one of two camps, right? Either you do believe it or you don't believe it. If you do believe it, I want to encourage you. Why don't you ask God to help you understand in a deeper, more full way the things that He's done for you through Jesus? Why don't you ask Him to help you live in that power over sin day by day? And why don't you ask Him to allow you to take that hope that's inside of you and offer it to others as well. If you don't believe what Jesus said, I want to ask you a question. Can you deny the witness of history, the witness of all of the followers of Jesus Christ who say He is who He says He is and He's changed their life? Can you deny the things that you've heard today? If Jesus is raised from the dead, you have to respond. You have to deal with that truth. You have to allow God to change your life. What are you going to do with what God has done for you? I just want to pray for you. You can have your sins erased today just by faith in the fact that God sent His Son, Jesus, to live the life that we could never live, a perfect life, and die the death that we should have died for a punishment for our sins, so that through faith in Him, we can live with Him forever. Let's pray. Father, we thank You so much for the hope that's inside of us through Jesus. Lord, I thank You for Your words of truth that ring through the ages and they come to us today even as we're gathered through um, the internet lord and gathered to be able to rejoice with people all over the world who know that jesus is alive lord i pray that you would give us grace as believers to receive everything you've given to us through jesus Lord, I pray that you would help us to live day by day in the freedom that you've died for us to have, that you rose again from the dead, Jesus, for us to have. And Lord, I ask you to give us power and courage 
and a voice to speak and hands and feet to reach out and to travel to those who need to hear this good hope, Lord. Lord, for those of, who have not trusted you for faith, by faith for your salvation, Lord, I pray for them now. I thank you, Lord, that you in your mercy draw us to yourself. And I ask that your Holy Spirit would open eyes, even as you've opened my eyes, Lord, and shown me yourself and your truth. I pray that you would open the eyes of others, God, and that many people would come to you through this message of the resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus, Lord. And on this day, we join with millions around the world in praising you, the risen Lord. We say it, he is risen indeed. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, thanks for listening. And now we're gonna join the Lion family and they're going to uh, lead us in communion. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, everyone. Thank you for joining our family here in our home. And we are looking forward to taking communion with you. Uh, hopefully you've got all your elements ready and you're ready there in your living room or wherever you're at to partake of communion with us. Wanted to talk just for a minute about the meaning of communion. And I wanna tell you a story from the scriptures that many of you are probably familiar with. But on the day that Jesus rose from the dead, there's a story, and you guys know what I'm talking about. There were two guys who had left Jerusalem brokenhearted and sad because Jesus uh, had died a few days before, right? Mm -hmm. And they didn't know anything about, I mean, that he had told them that he was going to raise from the dead, but they didn't see any evidence of that. And so they were really sad. So they were walking back to their house and as they were doing that, Jesus comes up next to them and starts walking with them. But they didn't recognize that it was Jesus. So they continued to walk with him and, and it, Jesus said, why are you guys walking and talking? He, he could even discern their thoughts, but they couldn't discern who he was. And so as they were walking, Jesus began to talk to them about the scriptures and, and reciting to them the stories from the Old Testament that were talking about the Messiah that was to come and that was him and how he would die and then be raised on the third day. And so it was, it's an interesting thing that they, they just didn't see it. They couldn't discern that that was Jesus. They, it was towards the end of the day and they got to their house and they asked Jesus to come in and have dinner with them. And so he agreed and he went in and still they're, they're sitting there at the table having a nice conversation just as new friends. And all of a sudden they asked Jesus if he would uh, take the bread and he took the bread and he broke it and he began to pray. And as he broke the bread, all of a sudden their eyes were opened and they could see clearly who it was. Jesus was the one who was sitting there with them. And so they were reminded, I believe, can you guys think of a time like that when Jesus broke bread, maybe a week or two before this? When did he do that? Mm, before they went up to pray. Yeah. And then he eventually died from the crucifixion and all that stuff. Right, yep, so it's called the Last Supper, right? Mm. Is when the disciples were all gathered together and Jesus did the same thing, he broke the bread and distributed it to them and they took and, and ate of it. And he, he said what we're gonna read here in 1 Corinthians in just a minute. He told them about the importance of the bread and, and the, the cup. Not that they were the body and blood of Christ, but that they represented those things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I just believe for you that are watching this morning, maybe some of you have never had your eyes completely opened to who Jesus is. But I'm praying and believing with you that today, as you partake of this communion, that Jesus is gonna open your eyes, that you will see clearly who he is. And for those of us who do know him, I know for myself, I need to know him more, more than I ever have before. And so I, would, I, I want that as I uh, partake of this, I want that to be the reality that happens for myself, for our family, for our church, and for everyone else who will participate. So we're gonna start by, uh, Benjamin's gonna read a couple of verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and then we're going to take the elements. 
For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Okay, yeah, do this in remembrance of me. So as we partake of the bread, if you want to go ahead, Ben, and just pass the bread out to each of us. And as we partake of this bread, we are remembering the fact that Jesus' body was broken for us. So let's pray over the bread. Father, we thank you that Jesus came to this earth and lived the life that we couldn't live because we couldn't be perfect, and yet Jesus was. We thank you that Jesus died for our sins, as, as difficult as that is to think about, the fact that he took upon himself our sickness, our sin, our shame, our guilt, and that he died on the cross. And also today we celebrate especially the fact that he rose again from the dead and that he ascended into heaven and he is alive and well. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing your body to be broken for us so that we might live. We do this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Now, Levi's going to read the next couple of verses in 1 Corinthians 11. In the same way, after he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Whenever you eat this bread, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Yeah, what is that? What does the blood of Jesus mean to you, Aang? Just forgiveness and cleansing of my sin and being a new creation in Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do you want to pray over the cup? Sure. Father, we just thank you so much for sending your perfect son and his extreme radical, unconditional love and sacrifice for us. And we just celebrate his resurrection today. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the blood that was shed, for the forgiveness of our sins, the cleansing of us, and for our healing. And we just celebrate you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Levi, you want to? Lord, we drink this cup in remembrance of you, in Jesus' name. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Thank you for joining our family in our home here, and we cannot wait, literally can't wait, until we can all be together again. And one thing for sure that we will do on that day is we'll take communion together as a body, and hopefully that will be sooner than later. But we're trusting God in that. So I wanna bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Have a blessed day.